Good afternoon. Thank you for being with us this Friday, April 24th, 2020 at three o'clock with SAC. Give me a second while I welcome our Spanish speaking neighbors. Buenas tardes. Gracias por estar con nosotros este viernes 24 de abril del 2020. Si quieren acceso al programa de hoy en su idioma en español, por favor marcan el número que aparece en la pantalla que empieza con 425 436-6200. Cuando contestan la llamada, por favor, comparten el, la contraseña que aparece en la pantalla, que es 627-682. Gracias. Again, welcome this Friday. You've been with us, many of you, all week. We appreciate seeing you and hearing from you. Uh, today is a special edition once again of Three O'Clock with Sock, uh, and we're going to have Senator Tim Carpenter with us in just a few minutes. My name is Tammy Rivera. I'm the executive director and lead organizer for Southside Organizing Center. Uh, we want to let you know that you can connect with us still in all the ways you used to, with the exception of seeing us in person until uh, we get permission to do that and that we're all safe. So you can call us at 414-672-8090. You can email us at soc at socmilwaukee.org, or you can communicate with us on any of our social media platforms. Here on Facebook Live, especially, we like to connect with you while we're on the forum so we can answer your questions and say hello. Uh, we're on Instagram and we're on LinkedIn. And please, I'll remember that we have a website that we have um, created an entire page dedicated to coronavirus uh, resources for you because of all the uh, information that's flooding us. We've tried to organize that in a way we think will be more helpful for you. You can go there to find things like basic needs, where to get food, where to get tested for COVID-19, where to get free health care. Uh, where to apply for unemployment, how to get small business help, et cetera. And so if you find uh, that you go to the site and something's missing, let us know and we'd be happy to include that uh, so that your neighbors can have all the latest information, uh, resources, and ways that uh, people can get involved and take action. Uh, we'd like to thank... Uh, County Supervisor Silvia Ortiz Velez, who was with us yesterday, she gave a lot of important information. Parks are open, playgrounds are not, um, the outdoors uh, portions of the parks are open, so we can't enter pavilions or like the domes, et cetera. But if we cooperate with Safer at Home um, guidelines, we can walk in, um, in the park. And also she shared that uh, transportation. The bus is still available this week for free. Uh, please enter the back uh, entrance of the bus in order to keep bus drivers safe. And they're only allowing 10 people at a time on a bus to keep um, the safer at home distance guidelines in place. So if you're waiting for the bus and it passes by, uh, she shared that that would be because it's already packed and it has to it cannot stop they are uh, working on creating and adding extra lines on the bus lines in order um, on those on the heavy traffic um, routes in order to make up for the uh, lack of passengers that can be on um, at one time uh, next week i want to remind you who will be with us so that uh, you you pencil that in. Monday and Tuesday, uh, the management team is going to be moder moderating. Uh, Marisol Diaz, our communications manager, and Gabe Charles, our civic engagement manager. They're going to tag team Monday and Tuesday. I'm off. It's my birthday weekend, and uh, we've been working double time and need a little rest. And so they'll be taking over. Wednesday, we have the Milwaukee Health Department Health Commissioner, um, Jeanette Kowalik with us. Thursday, we have newly elected um, alderwoman, Jocasta Samaripa. And we hope to have our Friday guests lined up really soon. We have 
um, several uh, great uh, uh, leaders um, committed to coming and speaking with you. It's just a matter of getting their schedules together. Um, the other thing we wanna remind you, I'm so proud of you all. This is such a stressful time for all of us, um, but the community, you show up all the time. Uh, so far, we just kicked off the One Clean Community campaign to do so, uh, social distancing safe cleanups. Um, what, those of you who are already walking, individuals or families, um, and our goal was 100 and we're almost there. A matter of fact, I think we probably are very close if we haven't crossed the finish line already, just in a couple of days. We're so proud of you. Uh, just want to remind you all that everybody has to abide by the safer at home um, guidelines. And uh, while you're walking, you'll be uh, cleaning up your, your one block. So we have 100 blocks covered on the south side. For those of you who filled out a registration from a different neighborhood, what we'll be doing is sending you a link to the organizations that serve the areas that you live in. Our, our district is from First Street to Miller Parkway, from the Valley to Oklahoma. Uh, but the rest of you will be sharing links to other, uh, what we call community development block grants, um, organize, uh, organizing um, leads, and uh, you'll be able to get in contact with them. This is our initiative, so we're not sure who else is doing cleanups, but you can certainly work with them. If we happen to get some extra um, certificates and you complete a cleanup and our, the first hundred are over, uh, we'll be happy to share. But until that time, we'll, we'll be directing uh, you to your neighborhood lead organization. Uh, please know that uh, as organizers, we're committed to ensuring our residents have a voice and a vote and a vehicle to organize. And so we like to create that space. Uh, at the same time, I need to make a disclaimer and say that um, the views and opinions that are shared on this forum don't necessarily reflect those of SOC. Uh, we want people to be free to share their voice. Um, and sometimes um, we, we are restricted from what we can talk about, uh, but we wanna make sure that other folks have platforms to share with you your fellow Southside residents. Um, this week, uh, we've had an improvement in you all filling out surveys, but we need to push a little harder. All of you who want certificates will have to fill out a survey and anyone who wants to enter the drawing this week, and we're gonna go again into next week, has to fill out a survey. Uh, we wanna know what's working, uh, what we could change, what other ideas you have, what information, was uh, useful to you. Only four questions, maybe five minutes of your time. Uh, all of this information is in our comment section. You click on that link, it takes you right to the survey and it's nothing, uh, nothing at all for you um, to, to fill out that survey. And you could end up winning a $25 uh, gift certificate to a local business that supports soccer is doing some really good deeds. Uh, with that, I want to go into our next segment. Uh, we've been doing critical updates um, all week um, and having guests. So I'll make some announcements and then we'll bring our guest on. Uh, if you didn't hear, we have a new president of the Common Council, um, Alder Person Chevy Johnson, who was, um, who was voted in by his peers this week. Um, he will lead that group of folks into serving our community. Uh, the important other part of that role is if the mayor should resign, the president of the Common Council becomes the mayor. So congratulations to Alderperson Chevy Johnson. Thank you to Alderman Ashante Hamilton, who has served us previous uh, to him. And thank you, Alderwoman Cogs as well for contending for the role and her service to our community. Uh, with that, um, I'd like to bring on our special guest. And actually, I'm really happy to because he's one of the few people who contacted us. And he said, Tammy, how can I help? I said, let's start with you just sharing 
at the forum and then we can dig in to other things that are needed. So I'd like to welcome Senator Tim Carpenter with us today. Senator, thank you for being with us. Buenos dias, Tammy. Muy bien. <laughs> I was just sharing that you're our first guest that reached out to us and said, Tammy, what can I do to help? And I said, let's start here uh, with just sharing your thoughts and um, appearing um, to connect with folks. And so but we've been talking about two critical topics, Senator. One is, of course, the undeniable critical issue of the time, the coronavirus, the COVID-19 response. And the other is the why, and we emph emphasize saying capital W, capital H, capital Y, the elections, despite the coronavirus risk, despite the safer at home. So if you could just start and give us some of your thoughts um, about uh, the response to COVID, uh, your thoughts about what happens and what needs to happen. Well, thank you very much. Um, I live in the 53215 zip code, and uh, I know uh, what's I'm trying to find out, reached out to every part of the district. I represent the area that Jocasta Zamaripa and Marissa Cabrera both represent. And uh, I served on the health committee for many years. Um, I'm briefed uh, very frequently by Governor Evers and the Secretary of Health uh, about what's going on with the COVID virus. And unfortunately, uh, people decided to go ahead with the April 7th election. And I was over at South Division High School, which was the area for the South Side to try and vote on Election Day. And I was very upset and disgusted that the election was held because a lot of people had to choose between voting, which is so important to our democracy, or putting themselves at risk uh, for their health and the coronavirus. And uh, just after that, I... Uh, read in the paper last week about how the number of cases have skyrocketed in our zip code 53215. And they're both intermingled. Uh, and I'm just very afraid what's happening. Uh, we'll try to get Senator Carpenter back on. Uh, as uh, you all know, if you started with us early on, we were having problems and then they seem to kind of settle and they've been popping up again. Um, very impressed uh, with Senator Carpenter reaching out to us. Uh, we happen to live in the same zip code, 53215, that is getting all this attention lately uh, regarding the spike in coronavirus. Um, and um, happy to hear that he was at South Division observing elections as well. As soon as he gets back, um, we'll continue that conversation. Hold on. Uh, right. Ah, here we go. Yep. For some reason, it cuts out every little bit of, of time. Uh, so oh, okay. I, apologize, I apologize. If it happens no again, I'll dial in right again. Uh, sure. But I talked to uh, the folks at the 16th Street Community Center to see what they needed. I was very happy that they received one of the federal grants uh, to help the 16th Community Center because that is the People's Hospital. It serves tens of thousands of people in our neighborhood. And we do need to reach out to people, uh, telling them about uh, safe distancing, stay at home, getting masks and gloves out to people. And uh, I know the area, I've lived on the South Side for 60 years, and uh, I know how close-knit families are. And I know with the houses, how closely uh, many yeah. people live in one house and also the uh, language barrier that's out there. And one of the biggest things I'm concerned about is I see now uh, the rest of the state sort of turning on Milwaukee and Dane County and now Brown County, where they had a meatpacking plant where there's been uh, several hundred cases of the coronavirus at a meatpacking plant. And I want us to work together and be united. I don't want to pit one part of the state against another. But I sent around immediately to all my uh, colleagues telling them what's happening in Milwaukee in the 53215 zip code. And also 53204 is another area to watch. And, and Senator, we talked earlier about some of the announcements that came out this week. Um, of course, the Safe Bread Home was extended till May 26, we shared that um, with some different new allowances in there. If people mm -hmm. follow 
guidelines. Um, also, the, uh, we announced yesterday that the state fair is going to be used as the alternative care facility for low acuity uh, C19 cases for, for people with the low grade symptoms to isolate and recover. What are your thoughts on, on, on those two things? Um, well, on the uh, opening at the State Fair, I'm on the State Fair Park Board, and we met yesterday and went over the details of having the facility at the Expo Center. Uh, it's considered to be a, uh, an insurance policy. I think one of the things that has helped, people have been very good of following the governor's uh, stay home uh, and be safe campaign. And so I think Wisconsin... Uh, Senator had said if he cuts out again, he'll call back and we'll continue that conversation. While he does that, I'll remind us of the rest of the announcements regarding the coronavirus. Um, Alderman Perez shared that the Common Council um, gave support uh, for fines. Ah, we cut out again. You were just talking about the alternate care facility that you were on the board and they're making preparations there. They did an amazing job. Uh, the Army Corps of Engineers came in. They have the whole facility set up. It's all ready to go. Uh, it's an insurance policy in case things do get out of control. But what's nice so far is the stay-at-home policy is actually keeping down the numbers of people that are being infected with the virus and being hospitalized. So when people are critical about doing things, I think we're doing a good job. We need to do better. But there's the rally in Madison going on right now that people want to remove those restrictions. And unfortunately, it'll cause the virus to spike again. There'll be another wave coming uh, on this. And it's going to affect the most vulnerable people, uh, African-American community on the north side and the Hispanic Latino community on the south side. So I don't want to give up. I think we have to press forward. Uh, the facility is all ready to go. Uh, it can take people starting today. And we just want to be prepared for the worst case scenario to save people's lives. Um, absolutely. Uh, we're all on board with you on, on that. Nothing is more valuable than life. Yes. Uh, no other liberties um, than that. And so uh, we want to proceed in a safe way and and make sure that all those supports for small businesses and unemployed folks, uh, isolated folks, uh, folks with disabilities or a homebound, that they're all taken care of um, so that we're all safe. What are your thoughts, Senator, on how we need to move forward in order for the November election to to be different than the spring, should we have another surge then? Or mm -hmm. God forbid this last until then? Uh, what I think we need to do is go to a mail ballot system. Uh, first of all, the, the state of Wisconsin tried purging uh, a couple hundred thousand people off the registration uh, rolls. I think what we We'll have Senator back on when he cuts back in. And that's really important what he was talking about, um, the ballots being used, which would have been so much more useful this spring than what took place, but um, for the fall as well. And for him uh, to share more about, Senator, you were talking about the attempted purge of the list and mm -hmm. ballots needed for the fall. Yep. And uh, what we need to do is make sure people uh, in the city of Milwaukee, so we don't have to go through this again. Poll workers didn't want to work on election day, and I understand that. We need to work on a system for every registered voter that they're automatically mailed an absentee ballot well enough in advance so they can fill it out, have it signed by a witness, and send it back, and work on allowing every person that wants to vote has the constitutional right to vote. And when those ballots are cast so that they are counted, and not put in a bin somewhere. And so uh, too many people are being disenfranchised from our community. And this upcoming election, the presidential election, is very important. And so we're doing all we can to make sure everybody doesn't have to go through the fiasco and the chaos of what happened on April 7th. Agreed. Any um, other things you'd like to share before the segment ends, uh, Senator? Well, first of all, I want to thank all the poll workers, the National Guard, everybody who came out and, and helped on the uh, election. 
And I want to thank your organization, SOC, and 16th Street Community Center, uh, local elected officials uh, that have stepped forward and have worked very hard to try and protect our community. Uh, it's so important for us to stand up for our constituents. And I feel whatever happens to any one of the people out there listening, it happens to all of us, including me. So I want to step forward, uh, learn uh, about the issue, and when we go to Madison, to do something about it to get the proper amount of funding. Um, last October, I was went with a Catholic migrant group that went down to the border of Mexico to see the conditions there. And it was appalling back there, but now there's a ban on immigration to the United States. We'll have Senator back to close out his remarks. Um, and then I wanna continue to sort of review the week as it related to coronavirus. Um, Alderman Perez um, put out a statement sharing that the Common Council had pa had passed um, support. Ah, Senator, you were sharing about your trip to the border, and now that the that they're closed uh, in your closing remarks. And it's it's terrible because the conditions back then, where I saw people lead, living in the streets, we went across the border. I was in El Paso, went to Juarez. People were sleeping in tents. Uh, they're being held hostage and uh, uh, blackmailed for money. And I can only imagine how worse the circumstance has gotten now down on the border of people trying to uh, be free and live a, a life like we all deserve. So it's terrible what's going on in Milwaukee, but I know we have a lot of relatives in other parts of the country that want to come to America. And um, I, I, I'm just very sorry and uh, embarrassed the way a lot of people are being treated. Well, thank you for your thoughts. Thank you for being with us. And we look forward to having you back at another time, Senator. Thank you very much, Tammy. God bless you. You too. Be safe. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Um, I was uh, speaking about um, the Common Council passed um, and giving the police department and the public health department the ability to find folks who are obviously um, going against the safer at home order. And we shared that this week as well. That's meant for people who uh, disregard the order and are grouping um, for festivities and for parties. That doesn't include all the allowed activities um, that we have been sharing with you since we started the forum, getting food, going to the doctors, et cetera. Um, so just be aware um, that the police and the health department are able to give citations. And um, we also heard uh, Captain uh, or Chief Morales share that he has even had arrests related to what they believe are um, absolute just disregard of the safer at home. Uh, the other uh, uh, thing we shared this week that I want to remind you of is we had ayuda mutua. Um, mutual help in English um, on the forum this week, sharing their powerful story of coming together as volunteers, um, taking donations and distribu distributing them to folks. Um, uh, they are collecting any uh, donations uh, Mondays and Fridays from 12 to 3. They're distributing Tuesday and Thursday from four to seven. Their location is 1115 South 7th Street. It's just a beautiful, powerful story of helping people with diapers for their kids, personal hygiene products, food in a manner that people don't feel threatened in a very safe manner to drive through window and a drop off, no person contact donation location. And folks are just encourage to participate in donation and that if you're in need to go. And so we're grateful for them as well. At this time, um, we, I'd like to welcome our coronavirus coordinator, Taylor Herada, to come and share. And I believe um, there's a link for you all as well to pay attention to. And I wanted to let you know that the deadline for earn and learn applications have been extended to Saturday, May 9, 2020. I just submitted our application and so should you. What's earn and learn? Earn and learn is a youth employment program and provides youth like myself and young adults on entry level work opportunities where we can get on the job skills. You must be age 14 through 24 to apply and live in Milwaukee County. Don't wait because 
over 300 youth apply and only 150 people get accepted for the program. I'm submitting my application today. Thank you to our two youth volunteers who put that video together for Taylor. Love to see young people doing things. Uh, we have youth organizers with us that are paid for employment preparation and training um, from our partners at Employ Milwaukee and the Milwaukee Promise Zones. And those youth go through an extensive program with us. We're super proud of our youth program and our youth. They work on their personal leadership, their academic and professional leadership, and their community leadership while they're learning the pre job skills they need to succeed in their careers. And let me tell you, as I've um, been so proudly announcing since we started the forum, we didn't miss one day of serving you. And quickly we got our youth organizers to work virtually as well. And so both them and our adult canvassers are making calls um, all, of, uh, all throughout this time to check on our residents. Our first layer of calls or to see how you're doing regarding the coronavirus and what resources you need and uh, trying to connect you to those resources, including our webpage. And now they're working on, well, they're still asking you if you need help there and uh, information or resources or ways you can get involved. And this um, round, uh, they're asking, how did it go with you in the election? Were you able to vote? Did you feel safe enough? Did you not feel safe enough? You stayed home. If you voted, um, how did you vote? Did you run into any problems? Do you have any questions? And the reason that we're asking them to do that is to get a better sense of what took place and what you all need in order for us to push that all together moving forward. And so can you imagine these young people will have on their portfolio that they became virtual employees during this time and how much strength that's going to add to their resumes. And so we have nine of them. Uh, we piloted the program starting with five. Um, the second year, we went to 10. And this summer, we're going to 20. And that's what the youth were talking about now. In order to be one of these paid youth, you have to get accepted into the Earn and Learn program. And that's an application that you fill out. And we're here for you. Our youth coordinator is Taylor Herrada, and she's also our coronavirus coordinator. And our staff is here for you if you need help and your youth need help filling out that application. We're happy to come alongside of you and make sure that we even keep a set of documents in, in the event the next time you need them to apply that we have them. So please take advantage of that program. And as the youth said, um, there's a lot there's a lot more youth than there are slots. So you want to do that right away. And the deadline was just extended. You can find where to go on our comments section. And if you miss that here and you need to come back, you can go to our website at uh, www.socmilwaukee.org, Milwaukee spelled out dot org. Or you can go to our Facebook and see in the post we've announced it as well. You don't want to miss out on that. Uh, next with us. We have our civic engagement manager, Gabe, who's been doing an outstanding job of keeping you all up to date on all uh, things election and voting. Hey, Tammy. Hola. Hey, everybody. I also want to shout out our youth organizers. They have been pivotal and so important during this time to make sure everybody is getting the information they need for voting for before the election, after the election. They've been superstars and I have loved being able to work with them as the civic engagement manager. So yeah, shouting them out, they've been awesome. Uh, we had a lot of really great information from Senator Carpenter. Thanks again for him being with us today. So I'll give you some, some local news from our County Board of Supervisors. Supervisor Marcelia Nicholson of the 5th District who served as vice chair under Chairman Lipscomb was elected chairwoman of the Milwaukee County Board of Supervisors in an 11 to seven vote this morning. And I know we've been mentioning a lot of different government entities. So for those that need a refresher, the county board is the entity that can establish programs, services, and 
laws and policies for Milwaukee County. And one of their major responsibilities is to adapt the county budget annually. So we really look forward to seeing what the board does under Chairman Nicholson's leadership and we'll, we'll see what's to come. Um, additional recap of this week, uh, we had two new older women representing the South Side join the Common Council this week, Jocasta Samaripa and Marina Dmitrievich. And their being elected brings a third of the council to be represented by women, which is the highest it's ever been. So this is historic and we're really excited to see uh, some amazing women being elected to the Common Council. And um, also the, the safe vote resolution introduced by Alderwoman Dmitrievich passed, which directs the Milwaukee Election Commission to mail every registered voter in Milwaukee an absentee ballot application and to provide paid postage to send in the application. So a lot of really good news this week from local politics, and we will be back next week with more. As promised, we are going to be showing you all a tutorial about how to fill out the census online. So please grab whatever additional device you have around you, whether it's a phone, a tablet, laptop, computer, lo que sea, and head to my2020census.gov. And as folks get that ready, I want to announce that Wisconsin is currently in second place nationally for a com for completion of the census. That's almost 50, we're at 57% almost. And we're second to Minnesota. So let's get these census filled out so that we can end up in first place like we did in 2010 for census completion. Uh, again, that's my2020census.gov. If you need it in Spanish, up on the right side, there is an option to click a different language. It'll be, it'll say English, you just click English, and then there's a number of different languages that will come up under that if you need it in a different language. But yeah, I hope you all have that ready. Let's get these census filled out. And here is the tutorial for all of you. To my2020census.gov now. The online questionnaire is available in English and 12 non-English languages. To select a language, click on the globe icon and select the name of the language, or select the name of the language at the bottom of any screen. Don't worry if you are looking for a language that is not listed. This video will show a step-by-step -step demonstration. Keep watching. You will need to complete the 2020 census in one session. If you leave, you will have to start over. To begin, choose Start Questionnaire. First, enter your 12-digit Census ID. Your Census ID is on the materials that we mailed to your address or left at your door. If you do not have a Census ID, select the link below the Login button and answer some additional questions about your address. You will still be able to respond. Then, confirm that you are completing the 2020 Census Questionnaire for the address shown. Select yes or no. If you will be staying at this address on April 1st, choose yes, otherwise choose no. The next button takes you forward and the previous button takes you back. Do not use the forward or back buttons on your browser or else you may need to start over. Next, enter your name and telephone number. Enter your full name in English letters. Sometimes a message may appear on the screen that asks you to check your response or enter additional information. Review what you entered before selecting the next button. Enter the number of people, including yourself, who will be living or staying at this address on April 1, 2020. Click on the underlined blue links for help with the questions. Make sure that you count people where they usually live and sleep. If someone does not have a usual residence, count them where they will be staying on April 1st. Include babies and children of all ages, close or extended family members, people who are not related to you, and people staying here without a permanent place to live. Do not include anyone who lives away from this address most of the year, such as college students, armed forces personnel, people in a nursing home, mental hospital, jail, prison, detention center, etc., or people visiting who usually live and sleep somewhere else. These people will be counted in other ways. Then, 
list the name of each person living or staying at this address. To add more people, select the button labeled Add Another Person. We do not want to miss any people staying at this address on April 1st. If you forgot to include anyone who stays here, choose Yes and enter those names. Otherwise, choose No. Now you're ready for the next two questions about the home at this address. On April 1st, will the house, apartment, or mobile home at this address be owned by you or someone in this household with a mortgage or loan, including home equity loans, owned by you or someone in this household free and clear without a mortgage or loan, rented, or occupied without payment of rent? Then, select the names of the owners or renters of this house, apartment, or mobile home. Next, we ask some questions about each person you listed earlier. First, we ask if the person is male or female. We also ask you to enter the month, day, and year this person was born. Make sure that the age that appears is correct as of April 1st, 2020. Next, we ask about Hispanic origin and race. Please answer both this and the next question. Select whether this person is not of Hispanic, Latino, or Spanish origin, Mexican, Mexican-American, or Chicano, Puerto Rican, Cuban, or another Hispanic, Latino, or Spanish origin. If you selected the last response, enter more details in the box below. Next, we ask about race. Select one or more checkboxes. White, Black or African American, American Indian or Alaska Native, Chinese, Filipino, Asian Indian, Vietnamese, Korean, Japanese, Other Asian, Native Hawaiian, Samoan, Chamoru, Other Pacific Islander, or some other race. Enter detailed origins in the boxes that look like this. Additional people will also see this question. How is this person related to the reference person? Select opposite sex husband, wife, or spouse, opposite sex unmarried partner, same sex husband, wife, or spouse, same sex unmarried partner, biological son or daughter, adopted son or daughter, stepson or stepdaughter, brother or sister, father or mother, grandchild, parent-in-law, son-in-law or daughter-in-law, other relative, roommate or housemate, foster child, or other non-relative. We're almost finished. Some people live or stay in more than one place, and we need to make sure everyone is only counted once. Select the name of anyone who usually lives or stays somewhere else. Otherwise, choose none of the above. If a person does usually live or stay somewhere else, select the reason why from the following. To be with a parent, grandparent, or other person. To attend college. For a military assignment. To be closer to a job or business. In a nursing home or group home. In a jail or prison. At a seasonal or second residence. Or for another reason. Great job! You are now ready to send your responses. Select Submit Questionnaire to complete the 2020 Census. You will see a confirmation page with your address and today's date. That's it! You have completed the 2020 Census online. Thank you! You may now close the web browser. To share this video or similar videos in other languages, please visit 2020census.gov slash languages. Thank you, Gabe, for continuing to help us feel comfortable with the census for ourselves, but also to help other folks. And so we'll be doing this. It's super, super important, as Gabe shared. Um, and, you know, Wisconsin, we're very, uh, Milwaukee and Wisconsin, we're very competitive here. And as she shared, Wisconsin was number one in the last census, and I believe the former one before then, in mailing in census ballots of all the states. And so surely our Bucks fans want us want us to beat our Timberwolves, our Brewers, the Twins, and our Packers, 
the Vikings. So I think we can do this, Wisconsin. We can get, um, we can certainly win this competition and get the census on. As you can see, there's tons of support and it only takes a couple of minutes. Uh, I also wanted to note while we're talking about history being made at the Common Council that um, County Supervisor Marcelia Nicholson is the first Afro-Latina to hold the chairmanship of the of the county. And so very um, proud of her and celebrating that great accomplishment with her. A couple of quick other reminders about what took place this week. This week, the Common Council voted to increase resources for the undocumented community um, in response to the coronavirus, because that's a population that has been um, eliminated or not included in a lot of the relief efforts or almost all of the relief efforts. And um, the alders, the new ones that you all elected and the ones that were returning, they did their swearing in testimony on Tuesday. And then Alder Woman Cogs um, submitted a, um, a demand for an investigation of what happened to the ballots on the election. So we're gonna keep you abreast of what's happening in those um, areas as well. And then in terms of the census, we want to remind you, if it gets a little confusing, uh, those those people who are like between homes, you know, sometimes it's children or it's an aging parent or it's a visiting spouse or a family or a friend member who's going through a struggle. Uh, wherever you were on April 1st is the date, is, is where you'll get counted. So if you're between homes, wherever you were um, on the first. And so let's say hello. We have, listen, we're gathering super fans. I'm like so happy to keep seeing you all come back. When this is all over, we're going to have a big celebration of, of your faithfulness and, um, to the forum and to voting and the census and coronavirus support. Um, I promise uh, because our super fans are here. And uh, so that would be Maribel and Lily, Sarah, Maricano. So glad. Um, we have Holly um, Lavora, who says she uh, filled out online um, her, I, I think it's census. So uh, Holly, uh, we'll have a staffer follow up with you on your question there. Um, and uh, Lily. Our super fans. We're going to get together when this is all done. All right. Uh, what I'd like to do now, uh, talking about our super fans and you faithful souls, is uh, to bring on uh, our communications manager, uh, Marisol Diaz, to talk about um, entering the drawing. Forum, Marisol here. For this week, April 20th through the 24th, the only way to enter our $25 gift certificate drawing is by filling out the survey that's located in the comments section. Make sure to do that. Thanks so much for tuning in. Now let's find out who's today's winner. We don't have a winner today because we didn't get any surveys yesterday. So I encourage you to fill out a survey and you can fill out repeat surveys because you're giving us feedback on today's show as well. And we want to make sure we know it's hard times. Uh, you all are hurting and we have those incentives provided by a donor for you all. And so we'd like to make sure they get in your hands because of the need, but also to support our small businesses in our community who are hurting at this time. The survey is short. It appears there on the screen. If you miss it, you can see it on the comment section. It doesn't take more than five minutes and you can be part of developing this show. It's a great um, way to use your time and help in even the smallest way um, the community now. Uh, we'd like to share um, thank yous to uh, first of all, Senator Tim Carpenter, who took of his time to be with us and is so like grateful that we that he reached out to us and said, what can he do? Uh, that's always a special treat when our elected officials make those extra efforts to be involved with us, um, who's also a neighbor in our, uh, in our same community. Um, so we'd like to thank him and um, all the staff 
who's working in all the ways you can't see them right now to be here for you. Um, and to you super fans and everyone else who is with us uh, getting the latest on the coronavirus, on elections, voting, the census and other programming. So, and uh, last uh, to end the show, the forum, we'd like to say thanks to those partners who invest in us with their funds um, to partner and bring SOC regular programming to you, but especially in this um, challenging time. So with us today, we have a guest sharing some thanks. Thank you for tuning in to SOC's live forum today. My name is Jeanette and I am the resident lead for South of the Tracks Polonia Resident Group. Today, we'd like to thank some sponsors, Wisconsin Voices, Community Development Block Grant, Neo Philanthropy State Infrastructure Fund, Movement Voter Project, Catholic Campaign for Human Development, Zilber Foundation, City of Milwaukee Office of Violence Prevention, Tides Foundation, City of Milwaukee Promise Zones, and all the faithful individuals who support SOC through their personal donations. We thank you. We hope you all are staying safe. Talk to you soon.